But it, you know, he was 20 years older than I was. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was a, a, a gentleman, always nice to me. And, and you know, that's all you ask for, you know. It says a lot about his character, too. I mean, it, it a does. president talking a to A young some... guy telling me to sit down in his rocking chair every time I'd go in his office. You know, sit down, sit down, go over to rock. And, you know, you'd look through the briefing book I would give him. Mm -hmm. You know, it was different those days. It doesn't happen anymore. Everything's electronic. Yeah. You know, no, no, you, know you don't like get seven. to go in the president's office as a 22-year-old lieutenant today. I, I don't imagine you do. And uh, it, it, it was a whole different world at that time. Mm -hmm. Very lucky I was in the right place at the right time. Maybe some people would say the right place at the wrong time. Uh, but I, I, I was there. Uh, I'm fortunate that I worked for this really brilliant general and who was very well respected and that we were responsible for the funeral of the President of the United States should one die. And as I told you, you know, Harry Truman, Harry Hoover, uh, Dwight Eisenhower, you know, somebody had to bury those people. But we never expected we would bury our president that would be assassinated. But uh, the general was so cool, we had such a good staff. The general had terrible uh, also, and today you take uh, Zantag or Zantac or you know one of those pills, and you don't even worry about ulcers anymore. Mm -hmm. In those days, he would chew these round, big white tablets, <laughs> disgusting. The poor guy, you know, you'd see this white stuff and out to general, you know, you know, he'd be talking to that, you know, and he'd, he'd, he'd take his hand and he'd wipe the white stuff off the corner of his mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he was an English professor. He graduated from military academy. Oh, okay. Became an English professor in the army, and he taught at the. You know, he was a teacher at the military academy, wow. and just went on to have a very distinguished career. It was pretty traumatic, and what what do you think? What do you, you know, what do you do? And it was shock. But then, when the president's body got off, and we took him off the airplane and took him to Bethesda Naval Hospital and opened up the casket and laid him on this cold steel table and looked down at the naked body of the president. It was just overwhelming. I mean, all at once, you, 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 you know, I had a job to do. And so I just didn't give any second thoughts to anything else at that point. So the general had told me, don't let a damn person in that room. Right. And, and, and watch what the heck was going on. And mm -hmm. uh, he was going upstairs with Jackie Kennedy. Very humble to be standing there. And, and to watch his, his autopsy and then dress him and lay him in his cast and look down on him and say, I, I don't know how to express it, but it, 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 it was like, you know, a good friend of mine died, not the President of the United States. I just looked at it and said, how can this be? How can this be? I know this man. And, 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 to, and I, I didn't even think in terms that this was the leader of the greatest free nation on earth. I just, at that moment, you know, time was just standing still in JFK. You know, it was a very short period of time. What, I mean, we didn't even know, you know, we were watching television like everybody else when the announcement came they had captured the guy that killed the president. Mm -hmm. And then the next few days were blur. I mean, we were preparing to bury the president of the United States. We didn't even think about Lee Harvey Oswald. We, we were not, that was the last thought in my mind was who shot the president no matter what. Hey guys, don't y'all drink my drink now. <laughs> and and we, 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 we didn't, uh, we, 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 we didn't think about it, honestly.
uh, we were just so busy. You know, when we heard about it and saw the film and all that, it was, to me it was a sense of relief because they knew he shot the president. I knew he shot the president because I stood there and watched the autopsy. I know where the bullets came. I know, I knew it was a single shooter. I knew there were two bullets in the field. And yeah, it was months and years later before all the evidence was put together. But my heart, you know, I knew that, that was the assassin. And I, I was, it was a sense of relief. I've only done it for one other dealer, and he was here tonight, uh, Larry Barnett, knew this story. Larry and I go way, way, way back. I mean, way back. Larry knew my father. And uh, Larry asked me to come to uh, Alabama uh, to, to do it in his, you know, similar event as this. And as a courtesy to Larry, Huntsville, Alabama, Larry's been, um, I, I did that several years ago. And over the years, uh, Larry and Randy are good friends, and they talked about it. And, uh, Randy, just not a customer. Randy's been a friend for 30, 29 years. You know, and so when Randy asked, I, I, I do it maybe once or twice a year to a group that only to friends that have a group that I know, you know, I'll do it if they ask me. And generally, it's maybe it'll, uh, even a school class, you know, or something like that. And, and I'll, I'll do it. And uh, so, anyhow. Randy asked me to come up here and I couldn't say no. Uh, it was a defining moment in my life. And I guess the thing about it was that I couldn't say anything for 15 years. And uh, you, you guessed it, it took a long time to put it all together after that. You know, it wasn't immediate. You know, you forget a lot in 15 years. But I will never, ever forget dressing the president and putting him in that car. Uh, and taking a look at him and probably the last person in the world that saw him when I closed the case.